This will be the final lecture for chapter 12, and it will cover sections 3 and 4. All right, section 3 is aldehydes and ketones. Carbonyl groups um, are a functional group within many, many, many organic molecules, and it's really just a name given to any carbon-oxygen double bond in these organic molecules. It is a very reactive point because as this picture shows you have a partially positively charged carbon atom and a partially negatively charged oxygen atom due to differences in electronegativity where the carbon is 2.5 and the oxygen is 3.5 that difference is 1.0 which is basically the threshold of very polar so that carbon atom is electron deficient and therefore it wants to get reacted with and the oxygen is electron rich and so it is willing to react with other things all right there are many different types of carbonyl groups um, and we'll go through just two of them here in this um, section, but we have aldehydes and ketones being two of them. Aldehydes have the carbonyl group right here. It has, they all have an alkyl chain and a hydrogen atom attached to that carbonyl. Except for formaldehyde, which is, a from, which is an aldehyde, and it has that structure. So formaldehyde is the simplest aldehyde, and it has two hydrogen groups attached to it. Um, but all the rest of them are going to have one hydrogen and then an alkyl chain. Ketones are very similar, but they all have two alkyl chains. Um, so the example here... Um, for the aldehyde is um, ethanol. So we have ethanol here, also called acetaldehyde, which is actually what ethanol, the alcohol that you drink in beers and liquors and stuff, that actually gets digested into ethanol, which is what's responsible for your hangovers. It's a uh, carcinogen, hence why people can get liver cancer. Um, it occurs naturally in coffee, bread, and ripe fruit. Um, and so, I mean, it's a very common thing. And then the ketone that's drawn here is acetone or dimethyl ketone. But acetone is used in nail polish remover and um, just paint strippers. Like if you aren't a person who paints your nails, you might buy it to remove paint from walls or carpet or something if you spill it on there. Example four here says to identify the following as an aldehyde or a ketone. Well, you can see since there's a methyl group here and there's a propyl group right here, this must be a ketone. All right, naming aldehydes. The E portion of the corresponding alkane is replaced with al. So in that molecule from before, which would have the line angle drawing like this, it has one and two carbons. So if we ignore that, it comes from ethane, and it goes to ethanol. The aldehyde is always located at carbon one, Aldehydes of one to four carbons in length use common names, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, where actually methanol is more commonly known as formaldehyde. And you might also call it formalin. Those are the common names for it. Formalin is a more co current common name for formaldehyde because um, no one uses just formaldehyde to um, preserve things anymore. They dissolve it in water, and that solution is called formalin. But um, technically, its name is methanol, because it only has one carbon atom right here. 
okay? So if there's three carbons, it's propanal, and then four carbons is butanal. If there are more than four carbon atoms, they're named using the Greek prefixes, penta, hexa, hepta, etc. So as you can see, we have formaldehyde or methanol, acetaldehyde, common name for ethanol, propion aldehyde is the common name for propanol, and butyraldehyde is the common name for butanol. As it says up here, the carbonyl carbon is at the end of the chain. It has to be always for aldehydes because you have that hydrogen there. Okay, so numbering them, you'd have one, two, three, four for butanol, one, two, three for propanol, one, two for ethanol, and just obviously one, but you wouldn't need to number that for methanol. All right, now for this compound here, it's called I'm sorry, right here is called benzaldehyde because that actually comes from not uh, benzene. <clears throat> it's going to come from that molecule. And so um, if you have that as a group where you've got... Um, the carbon there plus the phenyl ring, that as a substituent group is called a benzyl group. Okay, and so that's why this is called benzaldehyde. Now it could be called tolualdehyde or something because technically, if you looked at it closely, it comes from toluene. That's a terrible drawing, but there's toluene again, and so um, you could consider something from that, but um, it's, it's derived from this benzyl group, so it's benzaldehyde. Example five, what are the IUPAC and common names of the aldehyde with three carbon atoms? So here's one, two, and three carbon atoms. Your aldehyde down there. Again, it has one, two, three. So it's going to come from this, which is propane. So the aldehyde is going to be propanal. And, and the common name, propion aldehyde. And so I'm going to write in here, this is IUPAC. And propion aldehyde is the common name. All right, naming ketones. The first step here, the substituent branches off of the carbonyl of the ketone are written alphabetically, followed by the word ketone. So in the first example we have here, right on the left, they're both the same, they're both methyl groups. And so that would properly be called dimethyl ketone. Okay, uh, since they're both the same. The common name is acetone, and it has another common name, propanone. But the IUPAC name is dimethyl ketone. For the second one, we have a methyl group and an ethyl group. And so its name is, as you can see here, ethyl methyl ketone or butanone. And the one on the right, we have an ethyl group and an ethyl group, so it's diethyl ketone right down there. Now, if you're using the other way, um, you have three pentanone, and um, this second one is just butanone. If, it, if the carbonyl was here, it would, and not there, it would still be at the second position, and so it doesn't make any difference. For cyclic ketones, the prefix cyclo is in front of the ketone name. The carbon of the carbonyl is carbon number one. So the picture on the left has cyclopentanone, and the picture on the right has three methyl cyclohexanone because it's a cyclohexane ring, and the carbonyl is gonna be at carbon one. The methyl group is at carbon three. 
Example six says, what is the common name of three hexanone? So let's draw three hexanone. There's two, three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna number them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And since it's a three and own, it's a ketone at carbon three. All right, now we can look at, um, we have one, two carbons there and three carbons there. And so really what we have is an F, we have a um, propyl group over here. And we have a ethyl group, an ethyl group there. So it would be ethyl propyl ketone. or 3-hexanone. All right, solubility of aldehydes and ketones in water. Smaller aldehydes and ketones are soluble in water. Think of formalin, which is formaldehyde dissolved in water. For the same reason that smaller alcohols are soluble in water, it is H bonding. Larger aldehydes and ketones are insoluble due to the larger proportion of the nonpolar character of the alkyl chains. And so you have small ones being soluble because you have H bonding that can occur. Larger ones, the nonpolarity of that alkyl chain overpowers that ability to hydrogen bond. They, when they get these long chains, they can kind of get in the way of that hydrogen bonding because it can flop and flail around essentially in space, breaking apart hydrogen bonds. And so that becomes less and less likely. So as you can see here in this, uh, in these pictures, we have um, ethanol being able to hydrogen bond with water because again, the oxygen of the aldehyde is partially negatively charged. The oxygen atoms of water are partially positively charged. So you get this hydrogen bonding. And same thing for acetone. Acetone is soluble in water. But what's actually interesting about or acetone is that it is um, also soluble in many nonpolar solvents because it does have this nonpolar portion of it. All right, so this table just tells you basically whether these compounds are soluble or not. Um, so we got methanol is soluble, ethanol, propanol, propanone, Butanol, butanone, all of those are soluble in water and based on the corresponding number of carbon atoms. And then once you get down to pentanol and 2-pentanone, those ones are slightly soluble in water. And any and then the hexanol and 2-hexanone and anything above that would be insoluble in water. Example seven, would you expect hexanol, which I will just draw. So we have two, four, right there's four actually, five and six carbons. There's hexanol. So again, just to count the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. To be more or less soluble in water than ethanol. And ethanol is going to look like this. Obviously, it's going to be less soluble in water because there's only one and two carbon atoms in ethanol. Small, so very polar. So lots of H bonding. Now, the previous slide said that hexanol is not soluble in water, so that also helps.